Welcome back everyone, Mark Session here again, uh, this time with a uh, Photobash tutorial in uh, Photoshop. And we will create an image like this uh, based on uh, uh, references, preferences. Uh, my collection is coming from uh, the DuckDuckGo search. I like to use this search engine for uh, collecting images uh, because if you compare the same keywords this is what Google shows you. You have a huge area to eat up space and everything is a product and you see no resolution and usually your searches are altered. So what you need to know, uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier to look for images as references in DuckDuckGo. The key here is uh, the technique that you use. So try to use a proper keyword. Uh, for this reason, because keywords are that important, I like to name my images. So here's my mini collection. So I have uh, the keyword and usually use that as a name. Uh, you can also search by image. So if you want to get back to your original image, you can use the image search function in Google. So you can find them once you have the image downloaded. So name that's, that is not as important as it thinks. Uh, first time many of them are um, on pure backgrounds uh, usually I don't like to hunt uh, images that uh, had a, a pre-cut uh, yes of course I don't want to cut out leaves so if you want to look for trees or anything it's a good idea to look for a PNG image with transparency but other than that, you can always uh, use a lasso tool or, or anything uh, a band to cut out your uh, content. Uh, usually search is time consuming. So once you have a good idea what you will use in your project, then just jump in and start and don't waste too much time on searching for images and just uh, images. The most important thing will be the background image and the background image will be uh, in my case uh, this is the background image so let me drag and drop it so this is the background image and this was uh, this is the final uh, that we will uh, create and go through this okay so here it is this is the basic image and uh, I like to use uh, a couple settings that might be unusual. So first of all, newer Photoshop's using flick panning. So when you're pressing the space bar, it uh, uses that. And also uh, there is no pixel grid here. So in the viewport, if you see the pixelation pixel grid, you can go and show and uh, where is it? Here it is pixel grid. So to, I like to turn this off by default and also a couple preferences so in the edit preferences general uh, my preferences I don't like to use this uh, out uh, sorry where's that interface workspace there is no open documents as tabs so and there is no large tabs to uh, that those are eating up space and in the tools there is a zoom with scroll wheel so if i'm just going in and, and use the scroll that will zoom in and out that's a neat little feature flick panning this is what i don't really like to use when i'm using the spacebar and, and dragging i don't like this flick panning option that will move the image a little bit f uh, further okay and uh practically that is it uh, so regarding to the workspace or interface, I like to use this light one. You can use many other things. Um, honestly, the darker the scene that will switch your text to a brighter text and bright text on a dark surface is a little bit painful for the eye long term. So I know it looks nice, but in the end, it will hurt you more. So I think this one is the best option and usually your eye will read content uh, the fastest way if you have a relatively bright background and, uh, and um, the text is dark. If you have issues, you can always uh, 
change the brightness contrast of the screen. Okay, and as you see, I have only layers, channels, paths, and history. I don't like those swatches and everything like that. Um, many of the tools are available here for so color, uh, different adjustments, layers, uh, um, folders, and whatever. So many, many things are available here. I don't like to use a, a tab just for that. Okay, so here we go. This is the first image, and uh, right now I will add another one here. And that will be this little guy. So drag and drop it. Okay, instead of this, let me drag and drop it. As a separate layer. Okay, I don't want to put it on right at the beginning. And because we have tabs, L to switch to the lasso tool. This is the polygonal lasso. If you want to use the other type of lasso. So let me zoom in and uh, start the, ma the lasso. Now, as you see, I'm not accurate. The reason is I don't care about a proper cutout. Right now, I'm only interested in having a cutout. Okay, so it's not really control minus uh, and on the keyboard is the zoom so if you want to zoom during a cut I like to do that as well uh, so let me cut this and double clicking will automatically close it or control click and as you see later on I will make the perfect cut but right now because I don't even know how much uh, of this image will be visible at the end. I don't care wasting too much time on uh, cutting uh, in a precision, precise manner. So switching to V, move tool, going in here, and it's fairly small. And uh, I will, I want to place it somewhere here on the right side. And because of that, uh, I definitely need to flip it over and change the size. So let me dock it here now. Zoom in, Ctrl T to transform, holding down Shift key to drag, and uh, right click and flip horizontal. And uh, if I'm checking the um, the lines, the power lines of perspective, I can uh, make a guess on uh, how to distort this whole image. So for distortion, I'm holding down Control, and it helps me to distort the uh, edges and now I'm looking for this angle so I try to copy that angle make a match here on this top and the bottom one is a little bit it's not that angled so I will drag this out try to make it even bigger okay right now the length is reduced a bit so shift Control zero usually helps to zoom out, zoom in everything. So control zero can help you a lot because it will show the outer edges of this transform gizmo here. Two, and uh, okay, it seems to be proper. That'd be this, mm -hmm. right? Probably this angle should be there. Okay, all right. I don't want to show this part. It's just, um, you know, uh, from composition wise, there is a door. If the door is important for us at all, we want to shoot, show it fully. Okay, so we want to really show it and make it accessible uh, on the on the scene. But right now, we don't want to explain why that door is there, so we can hide it away. All right, now. That's it. All right. Okay. I can make corrections later on in the, in the go, but right now just adding more and more content. And once I have the layouts, uh, I can work on uh, some of the details like blending in, making uh, color changes and things like that. So let me drag this back and looking for the other image. There was a turbine. Okay, I was using this turbine because there are a couple nice uh, uh, tubes and things uh, going around. 
So of course I have to cut here in the end and there are plenty of things to be removed. But right now I will just uh, make a rough cut. So in the turbine, just a rough cut. and close and double click okay so here we go switch to move mode with we drag it and uh, maybe I want I need to put it behind so let me just close this and place let change the layer order so right now it is behind the scene uh, the size is looking good, actually. It's looking good. Probably the perspective is a little bit off. So Ctrl T, Ctrl Zero to make it fit and change the perspective slightly. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this one is working now. Okay, let me just make some changes. Yeah, I want to show more of this column. So the, the, here we are, we have these columns visible. Also, this one uh, won't be covered by the tubes uh, later on, and also this one. So I will edit that, but just wait for it for a second. Okay, so here we go. This is what is what worth to show. So zooming in and make it as a tabbed model so uh, our main goal here is to have this turbine have this little bit of a control panel here and this is the original uh, image now the original image we need a couple columns here and those columns will be duplicated because I want to cover uh, this turbine with those uh, columns so to do that I will just turn on, turn off visibility, switching to a lasso tool. Make it rough and relatively fast. Okay, selection is there, uh, camera zero and right click and layer rear copy so we have now a new layer uh, turn this back on layer 3 will be the columns so let me rename it and uh, layer 2 is turbine and layer 3 will be uh, layer 1 will be here at uh, this control panel okay so the columns need to cover uh, the whole thing not exactly the whole the control should be at the highest level So now right now the control is in front of the columns But uh, these columns are covering uh, the turbine Okay, uh, we have some issues. So what we do need uh, in the turbine area We don't really want to keep this because um, it won't be visible at all So what I will do I will create a quick selection I don't want to cut this so this is why the selection is just reduced to this area and I'm pressing delete and now this is deleted okay so let me turn off the other things this is what happened so I had this um, uh, this area of the uh, uh, turbine selected and I've just pressed delete and deleted the part of the tube here okay so let me control D to deselect uh, turn back on everything. So column is there. Uh, the column is covering uh, this uh, model. So that's uh, working fairly nicely. Of course, I have to complete the cutout. But right now, as a rough idea, it's working fine. My problem is probably I don't want to place the column, the, this part of the column in front of the turbine. So to remove that, uh, here's the column section. I can uh, use a um, a lasso tool to completely delete this part of the column, or 
I can create my first mask here. So the mask is this particular button. I can add a layer mask. Layer mask, the benefit of layer mask is to work without destroying the content. So I'm making a rough cut selection with my lasso tool. And uh, I will try to use the delete. Now, you can actually delete and remove parts of the mask or add parts to the mask. If I'm pressing delete, that will use the background. So I had to switch the color. To switch the color, this is what happens. If you press X, you can switch the color to black or vice versa. So it will switch the foreground and the background. Now, black is the foreground here. And if I'm pressing delete, it will get back the column. If I'm pressing X, it will uh, delete with a different color. So right now it will remove. All right. So it is switching automatically. So when I'm switching to a normal image, a normal layer, I'll have this red and, and white one. But if I'm switching and selecting the mask, it will switch to this black and white uh, set. Now, here we go. Be careful. When you are creating a mask, it will automatically select that mask. But by default, you have two options. Even if you have a mask uh, created, you can select and work on the paint content, the pixel content, or you can click on the thumbnail of the uh, mask and then you can work on the mask. Now, the big deal with that, you can paint this, you can uh, delete, you can uh, add opacity to the mask. It's a, it's a good uh, little feature to have and it's excellent for fine tuning things. All right, now let me zoom out um it's pretty cool now it's time to move on and work on other areas of this uh, another area is on this left side we still it's, it's pretty empty so let me check the resources and i have a this container set where is it where is it where is this here here we go this pressure chamber so that was my keyword pressure chamber so drag it and uh, I can rasterize it, just pressing enter. Uh, and uh, just, okay, control T, transform, and switch to V. Okay, and uh, probably the size Okay, I need to delete some of this layer because it's just covering too much and double click here image and layer layer smart objects and rasterize and then we can delete and control T deselect and control T and Shift and drag. Okay, so where is it? I have to place it somewhere here. Perspective. I think it's not that bad regarding to the perspective. Maybe shrink it down a little bit more. Okay. That's looking nice. All right. Of course, it's not that good if we have these uh, these areas visible. So I will make a little bit of a more accurate cut here. So zooming in and starting outside. My selection double clicking and zooming out and here we go and delete the unnecessary areas okay and uh, right now i see that i can make a basic perspective correction so ctrl t and just pull this back a bit because this column is not absolutely uh, vertical so i need to cheat this image a little bit more to fit to the perspective I can find on the image. Okay, right, not bad. 
Now, uh, what I have to take care of is uh, I want to cut through, I want to see the sky through this. And uh, for that, I want to cut some of these supporting beams. Now, just simply by going here and cutting it out won't do the job because we have um, we have those beams and, and it's not a single, it's a structure. You cannot really just cut through a structure. You have to follow the logic of the structure. Okay, for that, I will just Ctrl J duplicate this uh, background and uh, I will turn off the background image. I like to use this uh, duplication if I make something uh, change in a structure because if uh, there is any problem we can go back and uh, get back some of the parts. So I will start and going through here and cut until I reach this point. So let me just zoom in, Control and Plus to zoom in and uh, I was not accurate with this cut so just this is the correct line for this particular image and this beam is not even uh, fully straight and this part is visible and going through and I'm following the perspective so I try to make it perspectival control minus all right so this edge that's uh, visible here is parallel with this one almost parallel of course and then I can go back and cut from here let me zoom out yeah okay make a selection so this part will be removed I'm pressing delete now and uh, this uh, the pressure chamber is covering some of these but I think it's not a bad cut so this is what is visible we will see the sky through this and also we should open up this area so maybe maybe a little bit more um, just just here zoom in control plus and try to pick up the structure control minus to zoom out and control click and delete as well from this image okay uh, looking promising make sure that the pressure chamber is visible so here we go pressure chamber is visible uh, I want to place a tree somewhere here and um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, we also need to cap these in the end but right now it is absolutely promising okay so what else we need to put a sky in the background and put a tree somewhere uh, so look for the resources here we go this will be the sky let me drag this one and uh, look for resources sky photoshop and dragging dropping switching to v and uh, put it behind the background copy ctrl t zooming out and scaling it up okay now there is this horizon in the background and I like this horizon uh, what happens if I'm not ending up just cutting the roof but I'm also opening the back side of this building so let me dial down this uh, image all right and I'm pressing enter and uh, zooming in a little bit more so let me drop it and zoom in and uh, this layer is uh, visible in the behind but right now this background is covering so I need to cut through these okay so let me turn off the visibility of the pressure chamber 
and I will make sure that the background copy of this factory factory is selected lasso tool L is selected and zooming in and starting from here now here is a common thing that if you have a pending selection and you want to add to that selection so by default it is starting a new one so when you click in again it will remove your previous selection if you want to add you can turn on this boolean option like union selection but it will be permanent so if you don't want to use this all the time here if you're just pressing down uh, shift it will add if you're pressing down alt it will remove from the selection so for example if you make a mistake and you're holding down alt and you want to create create a correction now we have this uh, altered shape so uh, that's a subtracted uh, model let me undo this if you're using the shift you can add to your shape so right now it's extended it's a good way to make corrections Uh, right now, I don't care, but if I'm here's the here's the pending selection uh, If I'm just going in here and factory is there and I'm clicking on add mask It will keep what I have selected So if I don't want to if you want to avoid that I can choose alt and clicking on the mask and Then it will create the opposite. Okay, so alt clicking will uh, Mask everything other every other thing will be visible except your selection okay so right now i was choosing this as uh, i'm working on a, a layer so switching back to lesser tool i have to still add this patch and make it see through so control and closing it and i can use the delete function so if i'm pressing delete it is deleting now that means it is using the masking to remove that those pixels. Okay, so let me turn back on pressure chamber. So pressure chamber is visible. Uh, we can see the background layer. The colors are pretty off. So what I will do, I will add some colors and other changes. This is a rough idea. Uh, one other thing is missing at this stage. And that will be the uh, the tree. So let me go and select this PNG tree. Uh, before that, drag and drop. Go into Photoshop, drop it, and drop it over there. And uh, it's in front of the sky. So the sky is in behind. But this will be the tree. And because it was a PNG tree, it is visible okay so we don't need that Control w to uh, close and an open image and okay it don't need to be that big but we can make it big right I'm afraid um, the composition the orientation of the image is not that super duper good so once we have this rough layout, we will cut unnecessary parts from the image. But at first, uh, let me make the color and uh, other tiny, tiny adjustments. So that will be the next part. Uh, thank you for now and uh, see you in the next part.